What's up you guys, Anthony here from DIY Auto Tech. Today we're in the shop, we're gonna do a four wheel rotation. Are you tired of waiting at the tire shop for two to three hours to get your tires rotated? Do it yourself at home. So tools you'll need, you got a torque wrench here and a breaker bar at a minimum. You'll also need the socket for your wheel lug nuts. If you're not gonna be using a torque wrench, use a, uh, go ahead and use a torque stick. And then we have some impact wrenches here, an Ingersoll Rand and a Milwaukee Electric. It's also a good idea to have a little bit of a mallet to knock the tire off if it's stuck on there. A set of gloves and eyewear is always appropriate. And of course, jack stands, jack, and some tire chocks. So we're gonna be cross rotating these tires today, which means we're not going front to back. We're going um, from front driver to rear passenger, rear driver to front passenger. So we're gonna be doing a cross setup. This isn't for every type of tire but uh, we'll show you on the tire what to look for. Jacking the vehicle up, I'm gonna show that in the cards up here in the uh, upper right-hand corner. I have a video done on that specifically, so we're gonna skip to the vehicle being jacked up. All right, got the vehicle jacked up all four corners, and we got a jack holding it up and back, as well as tire chocks up here. So we're just gonna start unbolting some of the tires here. Watch out when this last one comes off. And so this tire will pop right off. And normally you can just leave it sitting underneath just in case one of the jacks fail, it falls on the tire and not you. We'll leave these lug nuts here. It's gonna stay with these threads. If these threads are ugly and rusty, you're gonna wanna go ahead and clean them off with a wire brush. But these have been used with anti-seize a lot, so they look good. So this tire will now go up to the front driver's side. So let's go and bolt the front driver's side. Now we can pull this tire off. And as we move this driver front tire to the passenger rear, we're gonna check for any nails, screws, or imperfections in the tires. You wanna rotate most tires between every five to 15,000 miles. These bigger all-terrains you wanna do every 5K, the softer they are. So this front tire is gonna go back here. This back tire is gonna go up front and then We'll bolt these two up and do the other two tires. While you're here, now's a good time to take a look at your brake pads. Got at least 50% uh, life on those. Take a look at your rotors. Not too scorn or worn out. Looks good. Now just to muscle them in place a little bit. And then you always want to start these hand tight. Never gun these on from the get-go. And that's for all of them. You want to get them going a good number of threads. And then on you guys working in the shop, your air impact will have a couple different settings. So we'll just go to the hand tight one. Set this wheel up. So this will be the hand tight one. You can see it just kind of stopped there at hand tight. Just going in a start pattern. Pretty neat stuff. We'll go wrench tight. And then we'll hit that with the torque wrench once we lower it down a little bit. Let's go get the other tire. Switch these guys out. the tires we've already done. Hopes to keep the car stable, right? Okay, let's do those other tires. All right. So this tire is gonna go in back now. Again, we're gonna check for the same things we did on the other two tires. Alright, now that we're back here before we put that tire on, 
it's good to kind of just take a look at the drum brake surface, take a look at your parking brake, your suspension boots, make sure they're good, that your trailing arm end links are good, suspension looks okay, etc. while you're down here. And everything looks okay. It's an old truck, but uh, everything's looking like it's in good working order. So we'll go ahead and uh, snug this tire on and go on to the next. And keep in mind, guys, you see that my body is never underneath the vehicle when I'm doing this. When you're working at home and you're working on jack stands like this, you always want to make sure that you uh, keep yourself out from underneath the vehicle just in case the jack were to fail. So never put your legs under the vehicle. Last tire to snug up before we torque everything on. Again, I'm gonna look from a safe distance, make sure I've got the good pad life here. Looks good, looks good. Nothing's leaking. Rotors look okay, suspension looks okay, etc. So I'm happy with that. Let's get this tire on. Me personally, I like this little Milwaukee Stubby 3 8 because it gets me right around 100 foot pounds. So I'll gun these up real quick to around 100. It'll probably do 90 or so with the attachment, and then uh, I can just torque them up. So that's what I like to do. If you really wanted to be by the book, you would chalk these and torque them each or lower the car down. Just like to go around and kind of snug each one up a little bit. And then the torquing is not as hard. Almost done. You can't hear it on video, but you can hear the hammering kind of labor down when you're using these. And that's when you know it's kind of hit its uh, peak potential. So let's go ahead and move on over to the torque wrench. All right, I got the torque wrench set up to 85 foot-pounds per the factory for my manual. If you can, try not to use an extension. Use the smallest extension you can, because the longer extension you use, the lower torque you're gonna be able to apply. So and now the tires are gonna spin, right? So that's a problem. So you can either lower the vehicle down or take wheel chocks, which is my preferred method. I'll take wheel chocks, block the tire off. That way I'm torquing these down under no absolute load. Down. All of these are torqued and you're gonna stop right when the torque wrench clicks. Important point, if you haven't heard that click yet and you notice a bolt getting easier and easier to turn, you're probably about to snap it. So stop and back that bolt out and get a new one. Now all that's left is the back track. Get the wheel chocks that we used, pull those back jack stands out, lower the back down, lift the front up, take the front jack stands out, and then we're gonna take the car for a nice slow drive. We wanna make sure that there's no wobble in the steering wheel, because that would suggest that one of those tires is slightly misaligned and tightened off of the seat of the brake. Before you get driving, make sure to air those tires up. A little $1 pencil gauge like this will do you just fine, keep in the glove box. You wanna keep those tires at around 32 PSI, but if you're not sure, open your driver's door, Look on the sticker on the side, it'll tell you exactly how much to pump those babies up to. That's gonna do it. It's gonna conclude another video here from Anthony, DIY Auto Tech. Like, share, and subscribe. And we will see you on the next repair.